All right, folks. Um, so I forgot to turn on screen recording when uh, we recorded this podcast, so I lost all the annotations. So I'm going to reference a few annotations I put on the slides through the podcast, which you're not going to be able to see because, again, I, I lost them all. I think it's still pretty watchable. Um, you know, maybe if you just stop the video, you can, like, sort of look at the picture and figure out what we're talking about. Um, and, of course, if you're listening to this on a podcast app, of course, that doesn't matter at all. But um, sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to try and make sure that don't happen again and you get, you know, all the nice annotations that help you understand and learn. Okay, now we're going to podcast. All right. Let us talk about atoms. All right. Mm. Well, specifically smashing atoms for fun and profit. Yes. <laughs> and people can stop bitching about your mic quality because it's much better now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I ran out thanks to the Patreon dollars. I, I ran out and got a new microphone so everyone can calm the fuck down. Mm. Smash right through that uh, that first Patreon goal. M much like the atoms we're about to smash on today's episode <laughs> of Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters. Uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I do this podcast and also a, a YouTube channel about uh, city and urban planning. And I'm on Twitter at Do Not Eat One. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm on a podcast called Trash Future about why the future will be trash, as well as this. And my pronouns are she and her. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I somehow got elected as a city councillor, and my pronouns are any. I really don't care. She, her, though, is easiest. <laughs> it's easiest because that's what everyone like offline knows me as, and I'm just like, yeah, let's let's not pull that <laughs> thread, okay? Let's not try to explain. Well, being non-binary is to like seventy-year-olds. That's mm. that that tends to that tends to be either you run into you run into either like cool old people who are like that's really cool and I support you, or just that is disgusting and you're horrible. There is no in between. Mm. The big cable knit sweater of non-binary gender. You just start pulling, and it just keeps pulling. Oh, endlessly and forever. Uh, finally, I am Liam Anderson. Uh, I'm at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. Um, so I uh, I get really annoyed with uh, dumb comments in our YouTube section, and I have two things to say. First, happy birthday to older man Anderson, my dad. And two, uh, I would like to point out, uh, per someone in the YouTube comments, Megan Burke is a dear friend, and uh, don't comment on jokes you don't understand, and then get us all mad when we're drunk. Thank you very much for your cooperation. <laughs> We also got canceled for culturally appropriating Grover House. That dude just blocked everyone. There can only be one Grover House thread. This is so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of my friends uh, tweeted about it, and she said, uh, "I hate that I know what every individual element of canceled for culturally appropriating Grover House is." And I blame Alice for all of it. Yeah, it was it was truly incredible. It's just like, man. And I'm just sitting here like, I have no idea what the hell Grover House is. Yeah, well, go back and listen to the bonus episode. Subscribe to our subscribe to our own Patreon. We'll, we'll wait. <laughs> just do just do that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not uploaded yet, but yeah, go and listen to it. All right. So as you can see from our image on the screen here today, we're going to be talking about nuclear power. Woo! More specifically, one particular nuclear power plant, Three Mile Island, uh, which is just uh, just south of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, on the Susquehanna River. Hmm. Am I going to understand this one if I haven't seen either of the two previous Mile Islands? No, nope. you gotta go back. Oh, it's like a soft reboot, so it's fine. The gritty reboot uh, of okay. nuclear meltdown. <laughs> the gritty reboot of corium and secondary containment. Yes, so uh, I'm, I'm going to start with the primer on wh how, what is nuclear power? How does it work? It's very simple, right? So... Oh, yeah, the MS Paint uh, genius hard at work. <laughs> Jesus. So you have spicy <laughs> rocks, and you put them in water, 
and you use the bubbles that the spicy rocks make to turn a fan, right? And it turns it backwards so when you plug it into the wall, it generates electricity, right? Hmm. And you have two different kinds of nuclear reactor in this diagram. Do I? You do. You have a friendly sun just reacting up there. That is true. Um, but the thing with the sun is that it doesn't have a fan, so it's less efficient as a power source. Not with that attitude. Because you can't just attach a fan to it. That's true, yeah. That's why the good lord invented the Dyson Sphere, Alice. No, but you can put Earth on. So you can put solar panels all over Earth as long as you don't mind, you know, clouds and night getting in the way. Mm. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Yeah, one day. One day we're going to get bubbles out of that sun. So, uh, obviously that's a very simplified version. But, uh, you know, basically what what is making these rocks spicy is nuclear fission, right? You, you, hit, a, you hit the nucleus of a uranium atom with a neutron, right? And if you whack it hard enough, it'll split into pieces, and that releases energy, right? And it also re it releases heat. It releases more neutrons that go and whack into <laughs> other atoms and split them apart, right? Now, if you do, if if you do that real fast, you get a bomb. We don't want that. We want to do it slow, so we just have uh, a continuous source of uh, heat, right? So, uh, and obviously, nuclear reactors can't blow up like bombs. That doesn't happen. But I saw all those movies, like the China Syndrome and shit. Character assassination on an entire industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, my pressurized water reactor is suddenly going to turn itself under a bomb by magic. Yes. <laughs> it's like how I turn the ignition of my car, it blows up and demolishes the entire block. It's got the same basic components as a fuel air bomb. That means it's the same thing. Mm. Tesla's working on that. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know <laughs> <laughs> the cyber truck, more like the cyber bomb. It's so goddamn stupid, and I hate it. And I don't understand why we can't just bring back the ninety-five Ranger. Why did he make? Why did he make the Warthog from Halo? More specifically, the one from the first Halo with no polygons. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm with I'm with Liam on the ninety-five Ranger thing. I think like the only acceptable truck has. A case of steel reserve in one footwell, and the roof lining kind of sags on one side, and the driver is your cousin, and he just kind of says hell yeah to everything. Hell yeah, brother. You got like six tins of skull running around in the back. Yeah. If you scrape out all of it together, you get one lip out of it. Yep, I've been there. You see, it's funny. It's like, <laughs> the future I was promised was space and reactors everywhere. The future I got is the fucking Cybertruck. <laughs> mm. But the, don't worry, they'll put a Cybertruck in space. Oh yeah. Just to ruin everything a little bit more. Can we make sure that Elon Musk is inside it this time? <laughs> so, in the nuclear reactor, right, we have to control these reactions so they don't get out of control. And we use a thing called a control rod to do that. And that's, you know, just sort of a, a thing you lower into where the spicy rocks are. And they absorb some of the neutrons. You know, it stops the reaction. This is how you, like, do active control of the spicy rocks. Passive design is a whole other kettle of fish. Like, you have... Negative void coefficients, fuel temperature coefficients, so many coefficients. There's a lot of coefficients. If we have our spicy rocks, then this is the fabled smooth black mineral, right? Is you have <laughs> something neutral like graphite that you insert into it and it absorbs those neutrons. Yes. In this case, math is literally power. Yes. And if you drop them all the way in, that stops the reaction dead, but there's some residual decay heat. Uh, as Lindsay was mentioning about, um, uh, the, what's it, the, the, the void coefficient? Yeah, it's like every reactor is negative except Chernobyl, because they're like, what could possibly go wrong? Our boiling water reactor will never undergo thermal runaway, until it did. <laughs> 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 and uh, so let's go into, I guess, uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how Three Mile Island was built and how that worked. Uh, Three Mile Island was something called a pressurized water reactor. This is as opposed to a boiling water reactor, right? In the pressurized water reactor, the water never boils because uh, it's under pressure, hence pressurized water reactor. Um, give me my pen. There we are. I'm so, just going to Madden it. Yeah, I'm going to John Madden this. Oh, great. It's a, the, the pressurized water reactor, a lunch pail quarterback that has good coachability. Yeah, show me uh, Texas Tech running for 98 yards, please. <laughs> draw it. Draw it. <laughs> it's like the boring but practical 
insert appropriate footballer here. I have no idea about football. Yes, it it, it is the lunch pail quarterback compared to the like flashy showboating uh, boiling water. Reaction. You could just say the Washington football team. You can just <laughs> go ahead and say it. So. Uh, the the spicy rocks are here in this big God. red tank, right? There's um there there's water going through there. It's at about 153 atmospheres of pressure, so it doesn't boil, even though it's up to like 600 degrees Fahrenheit or like 400 degrees Celsius or whatever it is, right? And that goes out of the reactor. It goes into this uh, steam generator here, and the hot pressurized water goes in the top. It comes out the bottom cold, it runs through a pump, it goes through the cycle again. In the meantime, there's another cycle of the water that goes to the turbine, which also goes through the the steam generator. It goes in the bottom cold, it comes out the top hot, uh, runs to the turbine, turbine runs the generator, generator, um, you know, goes goes out, and then you can plug in, I don't know, your, your phone or something to the wall. Yeah, your juicero, your toaster, whatever. Transformator does not sound like a real word, by the way. I have no I I, I just noticed that. J- just ask this, science titian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I want to draw attention to, which is going to be relevant here, is this tank here called the pressurizer, right? So, h- how do we maintain pressure in a pressurized water system? Uh, you squeeze the water. You can't do that because the water is incompressible. Damn. Okay. Um... New plan. <laughs> it's basically like, hey, what if we have a little bit of air in the top so we can adjust the pressure and also we know how high the water level is in the reactor? That's going to be important later. Yes. So this is partially filled with water and then there's a bunch of steam on top, which is keeping the whole thing at a certain pressure and then you can make adjustments here to the whole system. This thing is usually at the top of... Um, the, the, the whole pressurized water system, right? Where this would be the highest component in there. That way you can assume that if it's full, then everything else is full of water, right? I feel like it's not, it, it's a good idea to make assumptions in terms of nuclear power. Yes, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the power plant in question here, Three Mile Island, that opened in 1974 with uh, unit one, 18 or, or 819 megawatts. Uh, Unit 2 went online December 30th, 1978. It was designed by a company called Babcock and Wilcox. (laughs) Oh, Boilermakers. Yes. Uh, Yeah, you you just imported one of our terribly, uh, like, humorous British names. (laughs) Yeah, this is like, there's no way, there's no way a company with that name doesn't do anything other than, than, than build, like, incredibly high strength pressure vessels. They make big tea kettles. Big tea kettles, that's what British does. They, more or less, they built all of the um, boilers for, like, uh, steamships and like, and then, like, coal-fired battleships and stuff. So, they do know from pressure, but also having a very silly name. And to be fair, that we did used to have an engineering company literally called the Butterly Company, so it's like, maybe I can spread them on my toast. I don't know. They make boilers. And boat lifts. <laughs> this part of Pennsylvania also has... Uh, Paradise, Bird in Hand, Bearville, and Blue Ball. Uh, this is unfortunately my neck of the woods, and I, the Lancaster is just delightfully named. Mm. An intercourse. Don't forget intercourse. Oh, how could I forget intercourse? Yeah. Very beautiful scenery thereabouts. Uh, lots of, like, brown and gray and brown, and it, it, it looks like the Stalker series of video games. <laughs> So unit two is 906 megawatts of electricity. It's the nameplate capacity. By the way, if you're going to replace this uh, plant with a solar farm in the same general area, there would be about 23 square miles of solar panels by my back of the envelope calculations. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but how many really big windmills? Well, that depends how hard the wind's blowing. If it's not blowing, it's infinite. Yeah. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> infinite windmills. I, I, f- I feel like I'm one of those billboards on the side of I-80 that says you need reliable PA coal and natural gas. The wind sucks. Uh, the wind dies down. The sun sets. <laughs> Every single drive we take to, to Pittsburgh. I mean, the whole thing is that, like, they're right, but they're also advertising just the worst stuff. Yeah, exactly. 
It's like when the worst person you know makes a great point. That famously the goo that's going to kill all of us. Yeah. So the um the the capacity factor on this plant, I think when it opened it was about seventy three percent. That means you could expect like it's making the amount of power it says it's going to make seventy three percent of the time. It was on seventy three percent of the time it works all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, for uh for a lot of like wind and solar uh installations that's down to like twenty or thirty percent. It depends where you are in the world. Like, if you're in Germany, the solar installations there are like 10%, and I think the wind is like mid to low 20s. It really depends, though. It's like, if you don't have much wind, you're using all the best sites, your capacity factor is really high, like 40 or even 50%. If you're building a lot of wind, you start to build a more marginal site, so you end up going down to about 30% average by that point. Well, I mean, Sc Scottish wind power is pretty good because... A, we have a lot of wind, and B, it upsets Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, this was one of his big, <laughs> like, this was one of his bête noires on Twitter before he became mm -hmm. president, was uh, we were going to build an offshore wind farm that he thought was going to ruin the view from his shitty golf course. Do you know what also annoys him? I hope it did. Like, the wind farms mm. are built with migrant labor. A lot of them. Mm. Exploited migrant labor, which I imagine he's slightly more fine with, but, you know. And that, uh, wasn't there just a, a wind turbine company that fired all its workers for organizing? Solar. Uh, yeah. Solar, okay, yeah. Yeah. Right, if, you, if, if you haven't noticed, uh, mo most of us in this podcast, I think all of us in this podcast are pretty pro-nuclear. You wouldn't expect that yeah. from an engineering disasters podcast, but... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I mean, part of the disaster is that the, the Three Mile Island was like a massively huge PR disaster, but in terms of engineering, it's like, well, shit, we bricked a reactor, but literally no one got hurt. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so... what, I, what I will say is the disaster, the by far the largest and most expansive disaster that we've ever talked about in passing is our continued use of coal and natural gas to generate power. And nuclear is kind of the best way to avoid that. Mm. Yes. So this was owned by a company called Metropolitan Edison. Um, it's just, as I mentioned before, just downstream from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's uh, near Lancaster. It's near Middletown. It's near York. Woo! Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, um, let's talk about the accident. I've gone back to, back to this uh, diagram with the tr the transformator yeah <laughs> yeah i don't like that i don't think that's a real i think they're supposed to say transformer <laughs> the transform the transformationizer yeah words aren't real all words are made up don't worry transformators more than meets the eye <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna someone's gonna comment and we're gonna find out that's a real thing i don't care i'm yeah, also, whatever a pulve where? Uh, above the control rods, oh, slightly oh, the, to the left. The, the porv. Mm. Um, fat or right? It's like pork but gone wrong. Ah, well, to me, all pork is pork that's gone wrong. That is fair. No, that's a pilot-activated relief valve, and we're gonna talk about it in a second. Ah, okay. Spoilers. That's not how you spell activated. This is the night of. The night of March 27th, 1979. This is seven years before Chernobyl, right? Um, the accident, not the television series. <laughs> Everyone's driving enormous cars and like wearing huge collars and stuff. It's a terrible time in American history. Speak for yourself. They somehow inexplicably all have British accents. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Malays Motors. So the uh, Unit 2, I think, was uh, 13 months old at this point. And at this on this day, uh, Unit Two was running at ninety-seven percent power. Unit One was shut down. Um, earlier that day, they had removed a blockage in a condensate condensate polisher, um, which is like something they use to sort of. It's like a big water softener that they use for the uh, the the feed water that goes into the steam generator, right? Hmm. It's like a big Brita filter. Yeah, basically. So when they removed this blockage, um, it, resort it, it resulted in uh, water making its way into a compressed airline of some kind, which shut down the feed water pumps that um, uh, provide the water into the steam generator, right? So th this guy is shut down. Now there's no water going into here, right? 
Sounds safe. So that was about four o'clock in the morning. Um, now, so the reactor uh, does a thing called SCRAM. Um, that that's uh, that's a, an acronym for Safety Control Rod Axe Man, because the first nuclear reactor that was ever built in the 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 squash uh, court in the University of Chicago. Um, the idea was if they needed to shut it down quickly, there was just a guy with an axe who would <laughs> would chop Cut the thing. Yeah, yeah, he'd chop a rope that would drop the control rods into the reactor. Awesome. Yes. So that so your smooth black mineral uh all becomes fully inserted and it uh just kills the fission. You stick the rod in the hole and everything dies. It's yes. It's worth noting that that's probably a backronym just from uh the actual use of scram i.e. get the fuck out get the fuck out now. Yeah, it's it's a backronym. <laughs> like the whole axe man story didn't actually happen but it's a good story so that's a better story. I'm, I believe I choose to believe it. Mm. Look, my my feelings don't care about your facts. Okay, well that's <laughs> good. I'm gonna come over there and be senseless. So uh, anyway, so this and if you watch Chernobyl and you, you you heard him talking about AZ five all the time, this is the same process. It's the same process, roughly. except in Chernobyl, the control rods took like twenty seconds to first side of the core three mile, and they took one. And also the control rods actually shut the reactor down rather than causing a momentary increase in power, which is the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Chernobyl was bad. Yes. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now ordinarily in this situation, right, um, there's supposed to be auxiliary pumps that provide, you know, water just to cool down the pressurized water in the steam generator so they can continue cooling down the reactor, which is still producing decay heat even though the control rods are in, right? Uh, all of those pumps had been turned off for maintenance. Or they hadn't been turned off, but the valves to them were closed, so they turned on and were just spinning uselessly in air. Um, nah, the, the big mood of this accident. Yeah, exactly. And this is why you never do routine maintenance. It, it so that, only makes these things worse. If only Never they had worse do safety culture, this would not have happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it, this is actually kind of true. Like, one thing we can learn from this and Chernobyl is that a nuclear reactor is basically fine most of the time. Yeah. Once you have it started. And it's only once you start to really fuck with it in some really strange ways that you get these things. Mm. This is yes. just me installing... Uh, Dragonfly BSD on my desktop, mm. but also with the potential <laughs> for widespread ecological disaster. I mean, the whole mm, thing that's... is like it, you also need to have the extra step of building the reactor really, really shittily in the first place. Like, you know, Fukushima, it's like, hey, we don't need to build a tall seawall. I know Onagawa's seawall is like 14 meters tall. We'd be fine with five, even though we know Tsunami's been taller than that. And Chernobyl is just like, hmm, let's build a reactor design, which unlike every other designer reactor on the planet, is capable of undergoing thermal runaway and exploding, a fact which you consistently cover up. And then instead of a big, heavy, reinforced concrete containment building let's cover it with a tin shack with an asphalt roof yeah, a shed yeah it's just someone's shed <laughs> it's just one step up from that that boy scout who built a nuclear reactor in his backyard <laughs> i mean w what is what is an rbmk reactor but barbecuing too close to the vinyl side <laughs> of your containment vessel grover reactor oh thematic consistency Yes. I, I, I figured since we had the Estonian thing last time, I would keep that through line going. Obviously. So, um, now, the uh, so the pressurizer, right, the big tank we were talking about before, it has a relief valve on the top in case the pressure gets too high, right, from the pressurized water system, because it's still heating up and it's not being cooled down. Right? So, that pressure relief valve is a pilot-activated relief valve. So that's what the PORV is, right? Mm. Which basically there's like a complicated system where if the pressure is at a certain level, it will hold the valve in place, but then when it gets higher, 
the valve moves and there's like an electronic aspect to it. I don't understand it too well. Well, the only thing um, you need to understand <laughs> is that the indicator light for it took note of what the servo was doing, not what the actual valve was doing. So it's like, if the valve got stuck open, it would say, I'm closed, even though it's not. Yes, and that's what happened. Oh, good, that sounds good. Hmm. Duplicitous warning lights. Hmm. <laughs> There's two warning lights, and one always tells the truth, and the and other one always lies. lies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it opens, and it gets stuck open, right? So we've got this water that runs through the reactor, which is now, you know, it's just shooting at the top of the, the, the pressurizer, and it's going down into this tank that's supposed to hold it if it's venting, right? Okay, so... As as Lindy, as Lindsay mentioned, there was a flaw in the control system. Uh, the light said the valve was closed, even though it was open. Um, and um, you know, there's now sort of this uh, there's there's this condition developing where you know rather than circulate through all the water in the pressurized system, it's just shooting out the top and going into this tank, right? Mm. Um, You're just getting a dry reactor. That's no good. And the operators are looking at this, and they're very confused because the level of water in the pressurizer keeps going up, um, and they can't figure out why. They're like, "Oh, geez, do we need a vent? Uh, do we need to vent some uh, steam out of this uh, pressurizer?" When, of course, what they needed to do was the opposite of that. So, one of the things which you're taught not to do when you're operating these things is let the pressurizer get to the point where it's completely full because then you'll wind up with water hammer issues, which isn't good. Mm. Right? That's you basically like lose it. the ability to regulate <laughs> the pressure in the reactor. It's kind of like when, you know, certain surgeries, it's like, hey, we're going to give you a muscle relaxant. It's like, what'll that do? It means you don't die using the surgery, but you'll also lose all control over your bowels. Hell yeah, <laughs> where, my where my mind's working, but my body ain't. Yes, I mean, give water, them to water me. Hammers, water hammers rule, though, just because if you look at any of the diagrams they used to teach them, it is literally the most metal stuff imaginable, because it's step one, water flows. Step two, water abruptly cut off. Step three, a bunch of, like, jagged lines, and then almost inevitably in bold, red, italic letters, water hammer. Yeah. Water <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to do the fatality voice, but I have to keep it down because my roommates are asleep, so I can't do the fatality voice. In the grim future of water hammer 40k, there is only one. Oh, you stole my joke. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, it should have been quicker. Fuck. Okay, let me, let me get rid of some of these lines so I can continue to John Madden. Um, now, so at about 4.11, this tank over here was now full of coolant water, and it started to overflow, right? But I thought more, That's no more was more gooder. Is more not more gooder in this case? Uh, no, more was bad. Yeah. And, um... So, you know, the, 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 the system's just venting coolant water into this tank, which is now overflowing. The sump pump turns on, it like pumps the water into another building somehow. Like this water that was just in the reactor. Mm. This irradiated water that's now like in the bottom of the reactor building and that little indent that you have there and is now yeah. being pumped out. Nice. Yes. Cool. So uh, some this sounds an alarm and and you know the operators ignore it. They just didn't do anything about it. Oh, it sounds like Harrisburg. <laughs> yeah, you know because I th I think the water that goes through the reactor is only like significantly reactive for like seven minutes or it's, so or it's something like that. Just like the hot spicy rocks just make the water temporarily hot and spicy, but they last for like seconds. Does mean in a boiling water reactor though you can't go in the turbine building when it's on because you'll get radiation. Not much, but you'll get radiation. So, don't swim in it, but aside from that... You could use it to make your tea, you British fucks. You could, because by the time <laughs> the tea's brewed, it's not radioactive anymore. There you go. Oh, I don't like tea. I would not I would not want to live in Enco myself testing that, but okay. Yeah, you know, get the radium, like the good old days. Get your radium <laughs> beauty rubs, yeah. <laughs> so, at about 5.20 a.m., this uh this overheated coolant which keep in mind has been it's been circulating this whole time right just going around in circles without the crucial part that cools it off right uh it's you know it's it's boiling into steam even under a huge amount of pressure um and uh 
it starts to cavitate inside the pipes and inside the pumps. That means, you know, there's just big voids full of steam in the flow, right? Mm, very noisy. I learned about this from playing submarine sims. <laughs> no, seriously, propeller cavitation. It's a real thing. It's very annoying. I learned something new today. It'll kill you in a whole different way, yeah. The, the solution to this was to turn the pump off, right? So they turn the pump off so it stops vibrating, and they figure, ah, eh, natural circulation can handle it, right? So after, after they do that, at 6 a.m., there's a shift change. Ha! Doom. It's your problem now. Yeah, yeah doom. You, you just punch out, and you're <laughs> like, well, we've turned off the thing that sounds like somebody is, like, hitting the inside of our reactor with a bunch of hammers. Uh, so it's fine. <laughs> Bad thing. Take cover. Closing time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go on home, and uh, this is this is your problem now. Yeah. <laughs> so the new shift, uh, you know, they 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 get their bearings and they look at this like, hmm, this seems wrong. Hmm. I don't think any of this should be happening. <laughs> so someone uses another valve to finally shut off the vent out of the uh, pressurizer, but at this point, thirty-two thousand gallons of, of uh, coolant had leaked out. And then just before this, of course, enough coolant had leaked out that the, uh, the top of the reactor, uh, the innards, was exposed the over the water line. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, that's one thing you don't want, is to have a reactor just exposed to Chris air, Morris right? voice. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, as a result, there was a reaction with the fuel rods cladding and the steam and the extremely high heat, which produced more heat, hmm. and that melted the fuel rods, right? So we're in full-on, like, meltdown at this point, right? That also has the effect of re releasing radioactive, you know, fission products into the coolant, which is also, you know, still flying out the top of the pressure pressurizer right hmm. and now now you can't use that water to boil your tea anymore because you will die yes good good that's a for drinking tea a devil's drink <laughs> <laughs> this is a pro coffee podcast. yeah exactly <laughs> pro coffee anti-tea <laughs> we will happily die on this hill. this is a pro i thought this was a pro whiskey podcast this is a pro whiskey hot, uh, but well, can you put can you put whiskey in tea? Yeah, man. Uh, you can put what? you can put rum in tea. Uh, you can put whiskey in tea uh, if you're not a coward. You can put moonshine in tea. Mm, rum and tea is like an army thing. You can put anything in tea. Well, that's true. Except milk. That makes tea horrible. I will fight you on this. Milk and tea was a mistake. You might have to. I don't mm. drink milk and tea because I'm not uh, a child and or my dad. See, I respect <laughs> you. Thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> okay, so at this point, like, the water that's coming out, that's leaking out of this tank, which is overfilling, is no longer the type of water that's spicy for a few minutes. It's the type of water that's spicy for a long time. Mm. Right? How long is it? Depends on what isotopes it's contaminated with. If it's cesium-137, it's got a half-life of 30 years. Give or take. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, somewhere between 24 years and, like... I don't know, half it's, a it's million? It's half a million, but that's nice. like one part per million in terms of what's actually in the contaminants. It's like people say, it'll be radioactive for billions of years, and it's like, yeah, but that also means like you could just set a rock of it on your desk and it'll literally get more radiation from the trace isotopes in the walls of your house. Because the longer the half-life, the less radioactive it is. Which, incidentally, is why iodine, radio iodine, is the one you really gotta watch out for. Because that sticks around for eight days, which is, like, long enough to be ingested. But because it only sticks around for eight days, and because it accumulates in the thyroid, it gives you thyroid cancer. Which, incidentally, is... Oh, delightful. Yeah, that incidentally, that's about, like, where three quarters of the direct deaths in Chernobyl came from. Because the other was like, hey, no accidents happened, we don't need to dispose of contaminated food. Radio iodine, what's that? Hmm. Also, <laughs> all of the firefighters who were just, like, handling... Uh, fissile materials, and then, as we saw in the series, just kind of turned into gummy bears. You don't get yellow fever or whatever, but you do get radiation poisoning, so there are yeah, trade-offs. Like, the one thing the show did do is it, like, compressed the timeline of the guy with, uh, you know, when he picks up, like, the chunk of graphite that got blown out the core and just immediately starts screaming? It actually took him about eight hours to start screaming, and uh, then a few days later, his hand actually fell off, apparently. So, it's both better and oh, worse. Oh, wow. Cool. That's Metal. much Damn. worse. 
So at about 6.45, the radiation alarms go off. They find out, oh, the containment building's basically uninhabitable. Good thing no one went in there. Um, Because it's full of highly radioactive, contaminated coolant. And at 6.57, they declare an emergency, right? But no one actually knows what the hell is going on. Um, Promising. Yeah, because it's still a pressurizer is giving indications there's plenty of coolant in the reactor, right? Uh, Um... So, and there's lots of hullabaloo of uh, state and federal agencies and Metropolitan Ed- Edison all contradict each other about whether there was a radiation release and blah, blah, blah. But no one actually figures out that we need to add water into the system until seven hours afterwards. Dude, that's not ideal. Are they still pumping water out of the reactor building? Yeah, and time? so... They, they still had the sump pumps on, but it wasn't like it was being dumped outside. It was just in some auxiliary building where it wasn't supposed to be. So it's like, hey, oh, this sure. is a horrible yeah. violation of working practice, but it's probably fine. Mm. You, you've just made you've just made two buildings uninhabitable, but it's not like uh, it's not going into the groundwater. Yeah, water or Chernobyl is ain't. Yeah, it's not going straight straight in the Susquehanna. After <laughs> it honestly Chesapeake probably Bay. improved the Susquehanna. Just, just get people to dig under the reactor and just like yeah. get all that groundwater out and just be like, you know, hey, they're still wearing the hats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and 16 hours later is when the pumps were turned on to remove heat from the reactor. So they finally had a... They, 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 this thing was like slowly melting itself into slop for like 16 hours. Hmm. So we almost did the actual China syndrome, where it just, like, melts into the floor. Yeah, and keep in mind that film had come out, I think, about a week before yeah, I think exactly this particular a week. incident. The worst viral marketing. Scam. Twelve days. Twelve well, days. Probably one of the first two. Pretty pretty effective. It's like, if, it, if they'd known about it in advance, it could be, and now you get to see the movie in real life. One day For only. yourself. <laughs> Sin up. A hydrogen bubble was discovered in the pressure vessel about three days later from the reaction with the, 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 um, what's it, the fuel rods, um, casing and the steam. And they just went ahead and vented that to the atmosphere, you know, whatever. Better than an explosion, I guess. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. But it feels cool, man. Your turbo gets to make all the pss, pss, pss noises. <laughs> Yeah. Just roll coal with a fucking nuclear reactor. This is my bro off <laughs> valve. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just get the revs up and it just belches out this giant uh, like, hydrogen cloud. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just like the whole thing is like you can you, you'd be like rolling coal. It's like I got a live reactor core on my bed. It's like, but I don't see anything. It's like, yeah, but you will in like six to eight hours when you start throwing up bits of your own stomach because you're literally <laughs> dead from radiation poisoning. It's like rolling coal, but with a multiple hour latency, and it's not coal. It's like vomit mm. and organs and just gummy bear mm. people. I think you might be stretching this mess. I think I might be. It's just at this point, gummy bear people. <laughs> They they look like gummy bears. They look like gummy bears that have been like dipped in like custard or something. That's, like I mean that. that's literally what it does look like. Hmm. I hit the Ford F one fifty with the extended cab and the lead lined cab. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lead lining it means you get radiation poisoning, but it's not immediately fatal. Hmm. Yes, I like those odds. So um, all right. So what are the results of this? Right here, here's a picture of the reactor after the fact not a picture it's a drawing yeah Um, technically a ravioli yes you'd see like everything's fucking melted all the stuff melted is bad Mm. it took a long time to do so they had to really screw up to make this happen (laughs) i really like the uh the poster in the back right there that says don't leak on me yeah, they got the, uh, they got the snack. I'm going to have my reactionary tampons that say the it's same like they thing. They say, don't leak on me, and then they go home, and there's just a scale model of the reactor, and it's just like, this is my greatest shame. Leak on me. Leak on me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what happened afterwards? Well, there was very little actual radiation released outside mm. of the containment building, right? The average dosage in the surrounding area was 1.4 It was basically like a dental x-ray. It's, it's like, the, the real disaster here was just that, you know, these idiots bricked a brand new reactor and caused more coal to be burned and therefore killed us slowly, <laughs> but, you know, the whole thing was it was a PR disaster, because they're like, hey, we declared an emergency, but we have no idea what's going on, and also the populace at large is freaking out about nuclear energy, because, hey, it turns out 
coal and oil interests are like, if we can make people shit scared of our biggest competitor, we get to sell more coal. Get that, uh, get that good Pennsylvania coal. I mean, it, it, that must have been a PR coup right just, there. Just like good natural Pennsylvania oh, yeah. coal. It'll blow yeah. uranium all over your place because coal has uranium in it. And thorium. You've seen those billboards. Look, Phoebe, Phoebe Snow, uh, like, rides upon a rail of anthracite. She doesn't do that on, like, a rail of uranium with her, like, jaw hanging off and shit. <laughs> a damn shame, too. Nuclear trains, when? The atomic train. Come here, come here to, well, there's your problem podcast for Lackawanna Railroad jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so they brick the reactor. They can't use it anymore, right? Uh, it's a big shot in the arm for anti-nuclear grips because, yeah, the China syndrome had come out in theaters just a couple days ago. Activism to prevent catastrophic nuclear accidents was cool now. Um, I mean, to, to be fair, like, the nuclear industry did not have entirely clean hands with this because, I mean, the, they had also recently probably murdered a whistleblower called Karen Silkwood. Uh, for, like, trying to expose unsafe working practices at a fuel plant. So, you know, capitalism, it's not great. Everybody's kind of implicated. Yeah. yeah it, capitalism, it turns out, is, like, not very good with nuclear power. Or many things. Um, but at least we have the Cybertruck. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, like, nuclear power, you've got to spend the money and do it properly, and it's got a really long payback time. Like, hey, why do that when you can build gas plants which blow up a lot? Hmm. The, um, it, it doesn't work well with a profit motive, is the thing. Um, it's very expensive, and it takes a long time, and it only really works as a public good. You can't really just have, a like, a, a nuclear corporation that works very well. Mm. I mean, the thing is, it's one of these things where it does work well and it is cheap, but you've got to do it on such a large scale that basically only countries can do it. It's why, like, nuclear power in France is really cheap, because they're like, hey, we're going to build 50 reactors, all the same, pretty much. And they, they did. They just did it. Any company is just like, company A is like, I'm going to build this reactor, and company B is like, I'm going to build the same reactor functionally, but it's all proprietary, so you can't use the same machines and tooling to make it. And the third company is like, I'm going to make another reactor, which is, again, functionally the same, but slightly different. So you basically just end up with, like, this reactor zoo of all different designs built on private money, all competing over resources and just, like, eating each other. And that's why Watts Bar Unit 2 took, like, 27 years to get built. I would absolutely visit the radiator or reactor zoo. Yeah, you, you want the, <laughs> the the stereotype of communism that everything is drab and everything is identical and it, it kind of works forever with no maintenance but it's very like uninteresting that's what you want you don't want an exciting nuclear reactor <laughs> it, it is literally like i've visited um sizewell b which is like the only pressurized water reactor in britain it is it is literally just extremely boring there is just nothing happening it's like and that's the reactor it sits there and does nothing this is spent fuel. It sits there and does nothing. I mean, Liam, you, you've been to Three Mile Island. You went on the classic Pennsylvania school field trip there, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's th from what I remember of the tour, I was, I was pretty uh, out of my mind on, on some good drugs at the time. <laughs> uh, I, they, were, they, they were talking about just like, I kind of almost about that, about, you know they're not really visible until everything hits the hits the wall, as it were. Uh, but they were they were talking about you know especially in Pennsylvania, like we have so much coal power plants everywhere, and then in York County there's also Peach Bottom or Lancaster, York and Lancaster, and they were trying to like impress upon us fifteen year olds the idea of you want your nuclear power to be as utilitarian as possible, uh, and they were explaining like how it's like impossible to run a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania at this point, just because of the kind of cultural like scars almost. So yeah, no, build more nuclear power plants though. Yeah, the irony is of course that like with all those coal plants, they're basically like if the reactor fire at Chernobyl Four was a feature, not a bug. <laughs> So an investigation after Three Mile Island did uh, note that a similar accident had occurred at Davis Bessie Power Station 18 months earlier. That was another stuck valve on the pressurizer, but they had corrected that. Um, you know, they, they, they realized what was wrong in about 20 minutes and like, oh, shit, we got to stop this. And they stopped it. 
And then they noted that this problem was common on Babcock and Wilcox reactors and known to the company, but they didn't. Do what a surprise! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like this. This again is just why you do the standardization thing, because then it's like, hey, we know there's a thing with this reactor, which means that there's a thing with every reactor, which means, hey, we can just roll out the fixes to all of them, and everyone knows what's what. It's like, hey, by the way, there's this bug on this reactor, which isn't here, which like the situation in America is like, hey, that this particular model of reactor has this weird bug, this model of reactor doesn't, and it literally can vary from unit to unit if they were built to different designs, which some of them were. And I'm just like, this is why you make everything the same. Standardization is efficient. It's like when I was at Labour Conference and I was overhearing like Paul Sweeney just overhearing these nuclear industry representatives basically saying why all these different designs going on. He was just like, why don't you just build them all the same one? And I was like, I like this man. He gets it. <laughs> build them all the same. Sometimes boring things are good. Yeah. So, uh, the Three Mile Island accident plus the end of the energy crisis really began a slowdown of um, nuclear power plant construction, at least in the United States. We did not approve another nuclear power plant from Three Mile Island until 2012, I think. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure this will have no repercussions for the wider, like, planet. Oh God, no! It's not like it's not like we're damn near carbon neutral in southeastern Pennsylvania because of our nuclear plants or anything like that. No. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Limerick. Yeah, this podcast produced by Nuclear Power. Literally thirty percent of all carbon dioxide emissions come from burning coal to generate electricity, which really should be obsolete by this point, but it's not because mm, nuclear yeah. power is scary. Well, to be fair, it is scary. Nuclear power, you scary, but like. I, I feel like it's just a thing about how humans process risk that, uh, perhaps for obvious reasons, it's more salient in our minds of, like, people turning into fucked up weird gummy bears in agony for weeks over pretty much the same thing happening, but because you get lung cancer. Like... Yeah, or, or like, an oil or an oil refinery blows up with yeah. the HF alkylation unit. Oh, nice. Not that I would know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> well, no, because you were drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, legit really funny to me, though, because, you know, people are just, like, they don't feel this visceral terror about, like, any other sort of energy source. But some, sometimes when you just, like, point really basic stuff out to them, suddenly people are afraid of it. It's like... Hey, did you know that the bus bars on large solar installations are live anytime there's daylight and can't be isolated? So if you touch them, you die. And they're like, oh, that's scary. And it's like, oh, by the way, people have to go up to the top of wind turbines to service them. Yes, wind turbine fires. Yes. Yeah, those things are fucking terrifying. Literally, almost man. everything in the top of a turbine is flammable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, every so often they catch fire and just, you know, if you're lucky, you die of smoke inhalation. If you're unlucky, you're like those two engineers who literally got stuck on the top of the turbine with the fire cutting off their escape route. And it's like, do I jump or do I burn? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the only uh, uh, working at height thing where you might actually want a parachute. It's awesome. Hmm. Base, ju base jumpers. Overly represented in the wind power sector. Hmm. That'll do it. So, uh, I, I guess, so what, what really went wrong at Three Mile Island? You know, it's kind of a, a systemic failure. We got the term normal accident out of this, right? which is an accident that occurs from unexpected interactions of many different systems, which are difficult to predict, right? You know, it's sort of like, I mean, so there's a continuous line through all these episodes. We talked about Lac Magantique last uh, week, and, um, you know, that was a, that was a, there, there are four braking systems on that train, and, you know, none of them worked because no one knew what was going to happen. If they, if they, no, no one had expertise to uh, see what the problem would be, except you know the one guy who wasn't allowed to go there. Um, but like <laughs> here at Three Mile Island, it was like who, who would have thought that this series of accidents would occur and then just spiral, you know, into just a straight up like core meltdown that no one even could figure out was going on. Hmm. This is why you train your plant staff well. Mm -hmm. Or never perform routine maintenance. Uh... Also, also, yeah, very true. Fuck it. Roll the dice, scaredy cats.
Oh yeah, it's it's like the whole routine maintenance thing. If if all the backup pumps are isolated or turned off or whatever, you're not supposed to operate the reactor. And I'm like, I'm sure it'll be fine. What could go wrong? I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying about this being a case of unsafe routine maintenance, but I'm still uh, gonna die on this hill of perform no routine maintenance ever. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, if you have, like, an RMBK and it's completely solid state, I mean, there's no reason you would ever have to do maintenance or a safety test. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony that the safety test is what caused it to melt down. Yeah. Um, That's what happens when you try to be safe. There was no safety test. You didn't see a safety test. Why? Because it's not there. <laughs> so... Uh, but this is one of the reasons why uh, new nuclear reactors, when they are built, you know, we start to see they're being uh, marketed and designed from the get go to be like simpler and more robust. You say, well, we, we need less safety features because now there's less to go wrong. Yeah, thank God, it's it's like it's like one of the problems like uh, the we're building two new reactors here in the UK. They're both EPRs. It's basically like the French saying, hey, we've just like progressively iterated and designed. What if we keep doing that? But more. So you got like the most complicated power plant design in the world and the irony is because it's all using active safety like just hey we have the safety system let's build three identical copies of it it's actually less safe slightly than the american design the economic simplified boiling water reactor it's just like hey hot water rises cold water falls let's use that to do all the safety which just basically means it is a big metal tube whereas the epr is just like this is a big metal tube, but with, like, Frankenstein's lab around it. Like, big flashing <laughs> lights and stuff. Flashing lights, Jacob's ladders, big sparks. Mm. You need a lightning bolt to start it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I like the simplified boiling water reactor just because uh, the more you increase the passive safety margin of a nuclear reactor, the closer it gets to being an alcohol still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice! Hold double duty, that's what I want. Hmm. I mean, just so long as you keep it, like, isolated enough, you can potentially have a column still that's working off of the coolant. I, I, I like the idea of, like, um, you ever seen that, that fake image from a while back of, like, the whiskey aged 30 days by radiation? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want, though. Give <laughs> it my, to this me. This is my atomic whiskey. I mean, they're making, they're making Chernobyl vodka, and that is real. Uh, it's good because, vodka. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's smooth. I like it. Do it the Russian style. Just like you don't do a shot glass. You just get like a full size glass, fill it with vodka, and neck it all in one. It's good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and then like have like a some cheese and like a dill pickle, and you just like eat that. It's great. Schnubble cheese. Hmm. It's to die for. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> so um, the other uh the other reactor at Three Mile Island was uh still good to go. In fact, it was it's it it was licensed to run until twenty thirty four. But uh, Exelon Energy, who bought it from, uh, uh, what's it, Metropolitan Edison, decided uh, to close it down on September 20th of this year. Fascists. I know, right? They Because uh, it was too expensive to run compared to, you know, just building some natural gas. So, you know, that's that's a good 800 megawatts offline in Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> awesome. I know. But I mean, right? who, who doesn't love natural gas? Um, it, you know, nothing goes wrong with it, and we're definitely not, we don't have, like, a stack of future episodes lined up. Piper Alpha? What's that? <laughs> Piper Alpha is what happens when, uh, someone plays the Scottish National Instrument. Your control room explode. And, uh, also is a Chad. Well, Three Mile Island had, like, one of the best safety records in the industry, other than this one incident. Um, <laughs> it is literally just, like, Unit 1 was just like, hey, we saw how badly Unit 2 shut the bed. We're gonna not be them. Yeah, we're not We're not gonna do that. But again, they, it was shut down because better margins with natural gas, I guess. You know, and closing these plants down is very bad for the climate, and that's, like, one of my main criticisms of the Green New Deal is, like, you know, Bernie's like, we're not gonna renew any any nuclear power plant we fucking should kind of like, mm, yeah it's real what, bad what are y'all what are y'all gonna do in the interim we're all cold like legit. his his definition of clean energy is so restrictive it, it excludes fusion so it's like hey bernie you're now banned from using the sun the sun doesn't get a license extension shut down son you're bad 
Oh, that'd be pretty bad if they shut down the sun. Mm. I mean, that'd be pretty funny, though. Shun, sun goes on a wildcat strike. We're going to unionize the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, is the, what is the sun's safety record, though? I mean, we should get some OSHA people. It's not that it. bad. <laughs> it's un extremely unsafe operating conditions. You know what the temperature is out there? <laughs> you know, if you stand in it too long, you turn into a gummy bear. Plus, I mean, nobody's wearing eye protection up there. Yes, bad. Insufficient sight access. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bitch of a commute, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we need the Dyson Sphere for. That's, yeah, yeah. You, that's the, otherwise we're just citing them for, like, flagrant violations. Just go up to the sun, ride at a ticket, and the ticket immediately bursts into flames. And you're about to say something, and then you burst into flames. God, I, flagrant violations is just making me think of, like, mine disasters. We should do a mine thing sometime. Oh, we need to do a mine thing. That'd be fun. Mm. Yeah. Up a big branch. Fucking Don Blankenship kills uh, 30 people. Oh, yeah. And then runs for governor. Mm. Cocaine Mitch. Fucking, don't fuck jackass. <laughs> yeah. Might be the best case of, like, uh, the worst bad guy we've seen since the Sampung department store. <laughs> Whereas this one, we don't really have anyone we can blame for this, right? Like, I mean, unless, unless we want to throw the entire, like, uh, night shift of uh, this one unit under the bus. I mean, it's like, literally everyone did everything wrong. It's like, Babcock and Wilcox are like, hey, we don't need to get a system to detect if this valve's actually open or not. Let's just wire the indicator light across the solenoid. I'm sure that'll be fine. And night shift were just like, hmm, what's going on in the reactor? Should we investigate? No, let's just do everything wrong. <laughs> probably outstanding fun. work all right we got a car alarm oh yeah you hear that too. damn cars <laughs> yeah. ruining everything <laughs> car bad train good they know you've got me on the show they're gonna murder me for my support of tram buses no mm -hmm. <laughs> tram bus is good na 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 tram bus <laughs> I, I i would say just regular tram good but that's because that's from me going to college in croydon um Oh yeah, the Croydon tram. It's it's funny because because it was a tram, they didn't actually have to install like train protection devices on it. So that no. means that when one driver was like overworked, he came out of a tunnel like fifty miles an hour too fast, and then went round a bend, and like five people died. That yes. was fun. Just overturned the whole thing. Another mm. future episode, perhaps. So yeah, um, trams. Trams good. Trams good. Uh, N nuclear power, power good. good. Uh, solar power... Uh, good if you're in space. Uh, I'm tired of hearing about it. It's good if you put it on your roof. Or if you're, if you're, or, or if you're in the Sahara, like... Dyson Sphere. Dyson Sphere. Uh, wind power, good if you want to annoy Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, like, get a wind turbine, just tie Donald Trump to it and just leave him there. He'll come down eventually when his... Body rots enough. Mm. Hyd hydroelectric power, quite good. Yeah, hydro, hydro is good. Hydro is good. Did, did, did you hear about the, there was this like Russian dam where they yes. turned the turbine shut for maintenance and the whole thing just ejected itself through the ceiling? That was that was a fun time. Good lord. <laughs> well, we gotta do that one. That'd gotta, be fun. yeah. Uh, but but obviously the next episode is about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Of course, and I've forgotten to put in the slide for oh, that. Oh God, damn it. So I'm yeah, gonna gonna have to do that in post. Curses! You ruined everything. Get your shit together, jo no, just just draw no, just draw it in with John Madden, like John Madden in the bridge. Yeah, I could just John Madden. Yeah, and, you got uh, you got a John. Oh Madden. no, everything's 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 gone. I have to write over this one. That's fine. You just like, I mean, how how. How would you... Yeah. <laughs> Three Mile Island Observation Center closed due to bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I like that this car alarm is still fucking going. That's actually the, the very precise... A precise diagram of, the, like, the wind interaction. Yeah. Is it just fucking... Yeah. No, I, was, I was gonna make... I, I was going for that debris, but, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. oh almost. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge is made of spaghetti, spaghetti debris. Well, that that was the problem. Was um, yeah, it's just like the first bridge to be made out of pasta. What is a uh, suspension cable other than just a bunch of spaghetti put together <laughs> into one yeah. giant spaghetti. Just, pasta cable? Just recording this while we're all hungry. I mean, I me am, making the I'm reactor really vessel really into <laughs> a, 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 da a danger ravioli. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and up next on BBC Two, Ravioli of Danger, directed by Stephen Moffat. He somehow managed to objectify the ravioli. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's the hour. Um, mm. Anyone got anything to pitch before we go? Uh, listen to Trash Future. We're very good. And also, it, well, no, by the time this is out, you will have lost your chance to register to vote in the UK for our upcoming election between socialism or brutalism. If you didn't, I'm very disappointed in you. Tell them, Alice. Vote Labour. Yes. Vote Labour. Vote Labour. Vote Labour. Uh, go watch my YouTube videos. Uh, contribute to our Patreon for the Grover House episode, which will hopefully be up by the time this is up. Um, where we will be talking about um, the Grover House, the the poorly built um, addition to One Man's Home, which became internet famous. Uh, and which we culturally appropriated. Which we got cancelled for, apparently, yeah. Yeah, which we got cancelled for, because we, we are apparently not worthy of talking about things on something awful. <laughs> yeah. You are not true artists, you cannot appreciate it. Also, do you know one thing I've learned? If you complain about the nuclear industry enough, they'll invite you to their annual conference. That's literally what I'm doing next month. Nice. You're go go going to NukeCon. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna suggest they call it that. It's actually just NIA annual convention. I'm just like, you need to call it NukeCon, Nuke just, you know. If you register early, you get an extra, like, half hour in the ball pit. The ball pit's <laughs> now triso fuel granules, though. <laughs> hate the room parties at NukeCon. Like, eh. <laughs> Those elevator party people, ugh. <laughs> they just give you, like, a... They give you, like, a chunk of uranium ore <laughs> when you come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a chunk of RMBK. Keepsake RMBK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The pencils are made out of recycled RMBK. <laughs> this graphite is literally too hot to handle. Selling like hotcakes. <laughs> a pencil so sharp it's to die for. They'll give you, they give you lead gloves to handle it. Mm. <laughs> It'll slow down your inevitable death. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I have to do my, my pitch. Uh, follow my Twitter at yeah. Old Man Anderson. And I'm not sure I did it earlier. So Liam Anderson pronouns he him. Uh, die in a hole, transphobes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Lindsay, do you have anything to pitch? Please say something. Vote Labour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, very good. And nuclear power is good, actually. ESBWR or get out. It's it's both enhanced and simplified. Economic nice. and simplified. Economic oh, and simplified, because yeah. they're like, hey, the economics of nuclear power, they get criticized a lot. Let's just say it's the economic simplified oh, like that. reactor. That'll it's, solve it, it, everything. It's, it's, it's the more better yeah. nuclear reactor. Get the Marxist nuclear reactor. <laughs> seize, seize the means of atom smashing. Mm. <laughs> All right, are we good? Are we good. good. I think we're good. All, All right. right, bye, bye everyone. everyone. Bye. bye.